All right, so in this video, we are going to see the rise of a militaristic Japan, which of course has uh, consequences in modern history because of World War II. Now, when we last left Japan, right, it had done the impossible. It had modernized in about 50 years, made up for 200 years uh, in 50 years, and it had become an industrialized military world power. It also participated in World War I on the side of the Allies. We'll talk more about that in a second. But one reason why Japan was able to industrialize so quickly, if you remember, is because the government invested heavily in industry through subsidies. So there's a very tight relationship between the government and its industry uh, and these large corporations called Zaibatsus. And these Zaibatsus were huge corporations that did many different things, everything from making cars to selling insurance to making paper. Right, so one corporation can do all of this. Now, all of this takes natural resources. That's one reason why Japan starts to become imperialistic. They thought that would be a solution to their problems. That's why they participated in World War I. Uh, they were able to take some of Germany's uh, Asian colonies, you know, small little colonies, uh, because they thought, okay, we need to expand so we can get those resources, because we lack resources. So let, let's conquer just like the West did just like the Europeans did. And there are other problems with industrialization besides the lack of resources. It's also a concentration of wealth. You know, those Zaibatsus controlled so much of the wealth. So much of the wealth was in the hands of the very few, and that left many other in, uh, in Japan economically frustrated and left behind. And then you had the lack of natural resources, as I mentioned. And then after World War I, what happens is there's a, a great dissatisfaction between Japan and the Western powers. You know, it fought on the side of the Allies in World War I. They had representatives at the Paris Peace Conference, but they were largely ignored, and Japan feels slighted by their allies. Felt like they were not rewarded enough. And then they begin to become increasingly frustrated because the West keeps uh, reprimanding Japan for expanding. And Japan sees this as hypocritical uh, because the West always expanded and conquered and, and also standing in the way of Japan's needs. So there's growing tension and a turning away from the West and even some of those Western ideals. And you look at Japan, you know, they had already gained control of Korea, right? Uh, but what begins to happen is, is the rise of militarism within Japan. There is a growing uh, connection between certain Japanese politicians and the Japanese military who believe that Japan has lost its way, that the way is not towards westernization, it's towards latching onto traditional Japanese values and through militarism, through conquering. And so what happens is the Japanese military, without asking the Japanese government's permission, invades Manchuria and takes it from China. Uh, and the Japanese government thought that the Japanese people would be on their side. Hey, you, you know, the military, they're, they're acting without permission, but instead the Japanese people support the Japanese military because everybody likes a winner. Uh, and oftentimes what you see in times of crisis is people turn towards this ultra-nationalistic bent. And so you can see this political cartoon here. You know, Japan has just taken a chunk of China, uh, and the West condemns this. Uh, Japan actually leaves the League of Nations because of this. Uh, the League of Nations officially condemns the act, so Japan's like, well, fine, we'll just quit the League of Nations. Forget you. We don't like you anyway. So in times of trouble, you often see a, a call to return to tradition. Let's make our country great again. Uh, militarism, uh, you associate militarism with greatness and then intense nationalism. That's what you see in Japan. So you see what happens in Japan becomes a military state. They begin to purge Western ideas, stress traditional values, bring back a, a corrupted uh, samurai value system. Uh, no more labor unions because you, uh, you should just work for the good of Japan. Uh, only one political party was allowed, the Imperial Rule Assistance Association, which of course if you only have one party it's not really a democracy. Economic resources are now under government control. Uh, there's military draft law, conscription, and then along with the Manchurian invasion. So Japan is becoming more and more militaristic. And then there are other uh, upheavals in Asia, in part because of communism. 
eventually something is formed inside the Soviet Union called Comintern, short for Communist International. It's like Communist Training School, where people would go, they would travel to the Soviet Union, they would go to Comintern, and Comintern would train them in the ways of communism and communist revolution. And this was appealing to many people throughout uh, Southeast Asia because communism, at least in theory, and it promoted itself as anti-imperialistic, right? which true communism is anti-imperialistic. They see imperialism as just a, another tool of the bourgeoisie to oppress the proletariat. So the communists in the Soviet Union said, hey, members of Southeast Asia, why don't you come to us, come to Comintern, we'll train you in how to start a revolution, we'll support your revolution so you can overthrow the evil bourgeoisie imperialists back home. So the way it would work is, let's say, someone from Vietnam, right, would travel from Vietnam to Russia to go to Comintern. Right? And the Comintern would turn them into a communist, a red. Then they would travel back to their home Vietnam, lead a revolution, and turn it communist. Now, I use Vietnam as an example because that's actually happened. There was a man named Ho Chi Minh who traveled to Comintern, trained under Comintern, went back to Vietnam, started a communist revolution in Vietnam, and eventually Vietnam became communist and still is communist. And one reason why communism was appealing in parts of Southeast Asia was because of this anti-imperialistic bent that it had.